Bro, I have not done physics since like April 21st, dude, like a week before the contest. And the only reason I was doing physics is because like I had a class. Dude, it's so sad, dude. This year I actually prepared for USEFO. Last year I didn't even plan on making USEFO. But then this year I actually tried, but god dang it, they canceled it. It's so sad. But as you guys know, I'm a junior, so I'm not probably not even gonna take it next year. Well, I'll probably take it for the memes, but you know, I don't know. Who knows? Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and today, even though I'm probably not gonna take it next year, we are still gonna do some USEFO walkthroughs. And the reason why we're doing 2018 instead of 2020 is because I have not done the 2021 yet, because I'm a troll and I didn't take it on the day that I was supposed to. And also, I'm not sure if I'm worthy yet because I've not done physics in Eon, so I wanna ease back into it, hopefully. Let's see what we got, okay? All right, ready for this? Let's do problem one. All right, suppose you drop a block of mass time vertically onto a fixed ramp. Yes, I love fixed ramps, too. Moving ramps suck so bad, it's not even funny. With angle theta, with coefficient of static and kinetic friction mu, it is dropped in such a way that it doesn't rotate after colliding with the ramp. Throughout this problem, assume the time of the collision is negligible. Oh, <laughs> dude, my friends keep making fun of me for saying negligible wrong way. How do you say it? Negligible. Negligible. Is that right? <laughs> Bro, okay, negligible. Suppose that the block speed just before it hits the ramp is V and the block flies down the ramp immediately after impact. What is the speed of the block right after the collision? And then what's next? Okay, so it's asking what, what is the minimum mu that the speed of the block is zero after. So once we solve for V, it shouldn't be, I mean, once we solve I, it shouldn't be hard to solve too. Well, anyway, basically what happens is like the block falls down vertically and then what happens is that the, um, the ramp exerts an impulse on it normal to the surface. And since it immediately slides down after the impact, this impulse has to cancel out this uh, direction velocity immediately. So we could solve for this uh, velocity over here. So this right here would be theta. Bro, I always get this mixed up. So if we draw this nonsense, this nonsense, and this is 90 minus theta, that... Wait, what? Hold up, I made it really bad at drawing <laughs> diagrams. Okay, hold up. Okay, you know what? We're gonna draw a thinner ramp so that my scale does not annoy me. Okay, we're gonna do, bro, dude, this looks like Pinocchio's nose or some nonsense. Okay, whatever. So we got the block falling vertically, then this angle, so this should be theta, and the velocity perpendicular to the ramp would be V cosine theta. So the impulse that the ramp exerts on the block gotta be MV cosine theta. And impulse is basically equal to the force times time. Is it force times time? Wait, yeah, yeah, force times time, I'm not trolling. Okay, or FN. Delta T. And then the frictional force is going to be Fn mu delta T. And that's the impulse due to the friction. So the impulse due to friction is going to be opposite the direction of motion. So this is going to be equal to mv mu cosine theta. So essentially what this tells us is that your like perpendicular to the ramp velocity, this component over here is going to get completely canceled out. And then this component is going to be v sine theta. But then we had to subtract the new impulse, so this is the initial momentum, we gotta subtract the impulse due to friction, which is mv mu cosine theta, and then this is gonna be the final velocity. So that basically means that v prime is equal to v times sine theta minus mu cosine theta. Epic. So in order for v prime to be zero, we basically have that v times, uh, well, if this is to be zero, you need this part to be zero because v is non-zero. So we just do this, and then we move this over there, we divide, and we get mu is equal to tan theta, very cool. All right, epic. Now, suppose you drop a sphere with a mass m and radius r, and a moment of inertia beta m r squared vertically onto some fixed ramp, onto the same fixed ramp, such that it reaches the ramp with speed v. Suppose the sphere immediately begins to roll without slipping. What is the new speed of the sphere in this case? Okay, so we basically do the same thing, except now we had to consider torque and stuff. So once again, this entire thing has to be canceled out. Um, and this also, I guess, that same thing. So why is the V not exactly the same? Well, we know it has to roll without slipping at the end. Oh, so we should be able to do it without knowing mu. Well, let's see. So we know that our V is going to be the same. V prime is going to be the same concept because the same forces are acting on it. The only thing that changes is that now it's exerting a torque as well. Sine theta minus mu cosine theta. Okay, epic. But we also want that V prime is equal to R omega prime. And, whoops, that's an R. Whoops, that's not an R. This big fat R is an R, okay. And basically what your omega prime is, is like, you know that I omega prime uh, is equal to F R T, delta T. This should be friction, so it's F and mu R uh, 
delta t. Basically what they're saying is that your change in angular momentum is equal to the torque times delta time. And you know the torque is just like, you got your sphere, uh, force is here, the lever arm is there, so r times fn mu. Very cool. It initially starts with zero angular velocity, right? So that means that omega prime is going to just equal to uh, fn mu delta t over m r beta m r. Okay. Which we know is going to be mv cosine theta. Or we know that the force is mv cosine theta over delta t. Yeah, yeah. So this over here is going to be mv mu cosine theta. So that basically tells us that our v prime is going to be v mu cosine theta over beta mr. So are we supposed to, what are we supposed to put it in terms of? Well, we should not have to do it in terms of mu because, wait, okay, let us solve this equation first. So we have two things for v prime, right? So let us see. So basically you want v sine theta minus mu cosine theta is equal to v mu cosine theta over beta mr. So essentially this becomes uh, what? Mu cosine theta times one over beta mr plus one. That does not seem right. Wait, this is not dimensionally correct. What the heck? Wait, hold up. Oh, sorry, this should not be, take that out. Oh, and the m got canceled out on trolling. Okay, so we basically have um, mu cosine theta one over beta plus one is equal to sine theta. So mu is equal to tan theta one over beta plus one. Okay, and if we plug this back into here, we basically get v prime is equal to v sine theta, and then it should be What's a good way to write this? Um, we could do one over beta squared plus one over beta. Is that right? Seems right. I don't know what it's looking for. Is it looking for this one, this one, or this one? Well, I think this one makes the most sense. So I think we're gonna go with that. Let us check our answers. All right, solution. Okay, very cool. We get tan theta, very cool. Hold up, hold up. So we messed up on B, let us try this again. So as I expected, it's not related to mu, but what is going on here? Let's see. So omega prime is equal to the frictional force, which is Fn mu, and then R delta T, and then this is equal to, um, or I omega is that, and then this is equal to mv cosine theta, and then mu, and then R. Okay, and then we divide by beta mr squared and we get W prime is equal to V cosine theta mu over uh, beta R. Yeah, okay, and then that means that V prime should equal R times the angular velocity. So you basically get that this is equal to V cosine theta mu over V R, beta R. Okay, oh, I think, I think the idea is that your frictional force is not necessarily mu times your fn because it's static friction now, right? So your static friction does not necessarily have to be the mass friction. Okay, so we cannot apply this over here, but we could just, let's just call it fr delta t. So then this over here would be fr delta t, and this over here would be fr delta t over br, okay. Over beta mr squared, yeah, wait, okay, there. That's how it is. And then we have this over here. V prime is gonna be F delta T over beta mu, or beta M, whoops. And then this should also be equal to your MV cosine, uh, MV sine? Yeah, MV sine theta. What is your original parallel to the ramp velocity? I mean, imp, uh, momentum. And then you subtract F delta T, and then you divide by M to get your velocity. Very cool. Okay, so now we should probably be able to solve for F, and we basically get that F is equal to, or F delta T over M uh, times one over beta plus one is equal to M v sine theta okay or v sine theta and that basically means that uh f delta t is equal to beta plus one times v sine theta over beta okay oh well, it's the other way around beta goes in the numerator beta over one plus beta and then if we plug this back over here we basically get that v prime is equal to what uh v sine theta over one plus beta okay that makes more sense very cool and then for part two, so basically you want that. So in order for it to roll without stopping immediately, you need your static friction force, your maximum static friction force to be greater than F. So 
So our fn mu has to be greater than or equal to f. Okay, and we can solve for this because we know that fn delta t is equal to mv cosine theta, right? So we basically know that mv cosine theta mu is equal, has to be greater than or equal to f delta t, which basically means that we can replace this with beta v sine theta over one plus beta. And then we get rid of this, wait, this should be m. I don't know what went over here, but yeah, there should be an M in there. Oh yeah, I forgot to, yeah, I forgot to put it over M over here. Okay, and this V should not be canceled out, but this over here is our equation, and we solve for mu, and we get that mu is greater than or equal to beta over 1 plus beta sine, uh, tan theta. Very cool. Let us check our answer now, and I think this should be right. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Let's get it. We did it. We are still worthy. Kind of. <laughs> So I messed up half the question, but it's okay. It is okay. We figured out our mistakes, boys. Alrighty, let's go. We solved one. Too good. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll try to get through more of these, but I am pretty rusty at physics, so we'll see about that. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.